The brilliant front cover on the Irish Sun this morning. It's a wanted poster. It's the three Kinnahans and the uh, headline is Cartel Chiefs have price put on their heads. Gangsters hit with flight ban and sanctions. I'm delighted to say Stephen Breen, the crime editor of the Irish Sun, is with us to explain what is going on. Stephen, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. How are you? All good. Um, I, so this morning, Bob Aram is on uh, News Talk Breakfast talking about how he was shocked that the Kinahans had any business in America and as a result of that he is now cutting ties with Daniel Kinahan. I think um, the rest of the world had a fair idea that uh, the, you know, the Kinahans had been named in the Irish High Court and so therefore nothing new was actually learned about their activities yesterday but what was new was the interest at such a high level of the American authorities and that seems to be a game changer in this whole thing Stephen. Well absolutely I think the press conference yesterday was one of the most uh, surreal press conferences I've ever witnessed in my time covering journalism. I think no one thought for a second that um, the United States government would issue a $5 million reward. Oh, you've just gone on mute there, Stephen, for some reason. Maybe you might have a little, little quick look at um, getting his line back there. So uh, we're talking about the, the press conference yesterday where the range of sanctions that have been issued against the Kinahans was made public and indeed the high level of the US authorities which is definitely a game changer in terms of Kinahan standing in the world of boxing and is going to force the boxing authorities, the broadcasters and the fighters themselves to take action when it comes to um, their involvement with Kinahan and you would expect by implication MTK as well. So we'll talk about the fallout for this over the next while. We're just, um, I think, dialing Stephen Breen back up there to see if we can re-establish connection with him there. But um, so it is actually on the front of all of the newspapers this morning. The uh, Wanted poster, I think, is also on the front cover of the Star. Yeah, most wanted, uh, five million US dollars. And they've obviously got the uh, US, uh, the DEA uh, badge in the top corner for that one. And um, I think the point about this is that, yeah, so we can go back to Stephen there. Sorry, Stephen, you were, you were just saying there that um, uh, maybe to start again, what got the American authorities interested to the level that they had that press conference yesterday? I think following the, the Regency Hotel and the numerous murders that took place in Ireland and Spain afterwards, there was a commitment by the Gardaí to dismantle and uh, totally uh, disrupt the activities of the Kinahan Organised Crime Group. And I think following that um the guardy realized that this is, was a, an initiative uh, a project a strategy that, that couldn't be done uh, by themselves so they had to engage their international partners and as a result of that you know they engaged in discussions with the authorities in holland in spain europol and then indeed america because i think globally law enforcement now sees that the threat that the kinahan gang has posed because they're no longer just an ordinary gang coming from Ireland. They've built up this huge power base, this huge uh, wealth of resources that they have at their disposal. And and the, the enforcement agencies in America could see that, and they even said yesterday about how dangerous they were, how they engaged in, in drugs trafficking, arms trafficking, and also in murder. So I think it needed a coordinated approach to bring down uh, the Kinahan cartel because Obviously, the law enforcement agencies realize that they do pose a serious threat. And when you have the U.S. authorities on side here and to show their commitment to bringing them down because they do have a threat globally and to equate the, the Kinahan gang with, with uh, Mexican drug cartels, Russians and also Japanese mafia, I think it shows the level of cooperation. And I think this is what was needed to uh, eventually bring and destroy and dismantle the Kinahan organized crime group. So obviously yesterday is, is uh, important in signifying to the world that uh, you shouldn't be doing any business with the Kinahans. What does it mean for, uh, we believe, for Daniel Kinahan, who is resident in Dubai? Uh, what, what actually happens now? Is there pressure on the Emirates authorities to hand him over? How does that work? And why is the involvement of America important in that? I, I think it's very important, so it is, because Daniel Kinahan obviously moved to Dubai you know, following the incident at the Regency Hotel, um, he will know full well that there is no extradition treaty between Ireland and the United Arab Emirates. But there have been cases recently in recent times where serious players in organised crime from Holland have been deported from 
um, Dubai to uh, the, the Holland. So, uh, but when you have the Americans on board, when you have the resources available to them, obviously there will be political pressure will be continuing. We heard the Taoiseach yesterday talking about uh, the Kinahan organized crime group, the possibility of another reward coming from the Irish government. So, you know, the, the pressure has already been put on the Dubai authorities. But I think when you have like, the Americans getting involved, I mean, the decrees issued yesterday were from President Biden himself, that he has the authority to issue these decrees. So it shows the threat that the Americans are taking this. So there will be untold pressure put on the authorities in Dubai to take action against Daniel Kinahan. The question for him is now and his associates, you know, are, are people in the boxing industry, people who are big sports personalities, and we, we heard the, the Garda Commissioner yesterday talking about um, should these individuals look to who they're doing business with because the Kinahan brand, after yesterday's announcement, is now toxic. You know, our people really want to go and do business with someone who has a five million uh, dollar bounty on their head. So a lot of questions remain uh, to be answered here, and, and there's no question that there is huge pressure on Daniel Kinahan and his associates at this moment. Do we know what triggered the American involvement and in the announcement yesterday? Is it anything to do with the fact that the Biden administration have strong links with Ireland, that maybe some calls were made, can you help us out here? Was it anything to do with that or was this always going to be part of the, like, was it just that the body of work reached a point where the American authorities were comfortable to say, okay, we're going to do this now? I think we heard at the press conference yesterday, we heard about the, uh, the Garda Commissioner and Assistant Commissioner John O'Driscoll talk about the high level negotiations and talks that have been going on since 2018. Indeed, when the Garda Commissioner took up his position in 2018, one of the first briefings he had was with the Assistant Commissioner John O'Driscoll, who spoke about the desire and briefed him on the threat posed by the Kinahan cartel. And I think from then onwards, they realised that they did need the support of other law enforcement agencies, and that included the support of the American uh, government and the American administration. But uh, in recent times, you've had senior Garda traveling to America. Last year, there was a liaison officer appointed to Colombia, also a liaison officer in Washington. Oh, that line's just gone again. That That is um, Stephen Breen, the crime editor of the Irish Sun there. We were nearly finished up item anyway so um, we leave that there for now but that is the story this morning um, and as I said Bob Arum has been on News Talk Breakfast he's been talking about so I don't know if you remember but Bob Arum was basically saying that uh, Daniel Kinnan an honourable guy and that was his understanding of it and uh, the stuff in the press was stuff in the press and he had no evidence or anything about it well obviously nobody can say that anymore because the US government have as uh, Stephen Breen put it there put a bounty on Daniel Kinahan's head. So just have a listen to this. This is Bob Arum, legendary boxing promoter, founder of Top Rank, the CEO there, a man who's literally seen everything in the game all the way back to Muhammad Ali um, and who's been centrally involved in trying to put together the big heavyweight fights, the big super fights, particularly the Tyson Fury, um, Anthony Joshua fight, which never happened. But here's the conversation that... Um, uh, Bob Arum has been having this morning with Shane Coleman of News Talk Breakfast. We pick it up here after he'd stated that he last out with Daniel Kinnan just two or three months ago. But I put it to you that if you're if you're banned from doing doing business with U.S. corporations, U.S. companies, it's it's very difficult to have a future in in boxing promotion. Well, I think that's fairly obvious, and also. Uh, there is, uh, uh, as far as the UK is concerned, which is the second biggest uh, boxing country in the world, uh, you know, Sky has, uh, and BT uh, have um, made their position clear on Kinahan that they want nothing to do with him or uh, his people. Uh, obviously, you're, you're involved in this huge fight, Tyson Fury fighting on on Saturday week. You're promoting it as right. as you as you've done many times over the the, the, the decades. Promoted huge fights. Uh, did Daniel Kinnan ever have any involvement at all in 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 this upcoming fight? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, I I have uh, partnered with uh, Frank Warren of Queensbury, uh, as we have in the past. And uh, 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 Frank and I, uh, uh, between us, uh, said that we didn't want 
Kinahan to be involved in this. Uh, I think he tried through Frank to become involved, and we wouldn't uh, allow that. Nothing to do with this, though. Nothing to do with uh, with uh, the U.S. government regulations. But he hasn't been involved in the in the uh, uh, fight with uh, Fury and White. And uh, he won't be uh, uh, involved at all uh, in that fight. But okay. that, again, is not related to this U.S. Uh, declaration. Two last quick questions before we let you go, uh, Bob, and, and I know you're pressed f- for time. Uh, were you very shocked when you heard this news today? Had you any inkling that this might be in the, in the pipeline? Not, I, I, was, I, I wasn't shocked particularly, but I was surprised because I had no inkling that it was coming down, that there was any type of U.S. involvement here. That was the lit. I knew all of the accusations uh, from the Irish uh, side of it. I mean, that uh, the Irish uh, uh, media and uh, all of that but I didn't even contemplate that the U.S. would be involved. Based on what you have heard today and based on what the U.S. government has said and the, you know, the U.S. ambassador to Ireland was, was very, uh, very upfront today in, in her comments in relation to, to, to the Kinnahans, um, could you ever envisage doing business with Daniel Kinnahan again in the future? No. I, I, you know, again... Unless something obviously dramatically changes, uh, which I can't foresee, I will not do business with uh, Kinahan based on these uh, assertions by the U.S., by my government. I mean, just uh, I don't believe uh, that somebody who is implicated in drug trafficking uh, should be involved in boxing and or should be and particularly shouldn't be involved uh with my company top rank in any capacity uh bob arm having a road to damascus moment yesterday after the sorry that's this morning after the press conference yesterday about daniel kinahan uh it was okay when it was irish kids that were you know getting uh, sucked into the uh murder and drugs game but when it's going to be American kids, though, no, top rank, not interested because, you know, it's a bit too close to home. So uh, good old Bob Aram there, 90 years of age, still going strong, still centrally involved in everything that's happening in the world of boxing and denying that uh, Kinahan has any involvement in the upcoming fight, which is, uh, I don't know, 10 days away, 8 days away at this point. So uh, a series of interesting press conferences to come, particularly for Tyson Fury. And I don't know, I actually expect a, a Twitter video from Tyson Fury to drop in the next 24 hours or so where we get to know what he thinks about the situation. And it also leaves MTK Global in an interesting spot with all of the boxers that they control and the who's who list, particularly of Irish boxers who are involved with MTK. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens over the next while with that. John Duggan, good morning to you. Yeah, hi, Ger. Um, I'd love to ask Tyson Fury if he now is uncomfortable with any of the past pronouncements he's made? I suspect he won't be. I suspect that he's going to say, well, I don't want to second guess what he's going to say, but um, he has very much been a fully signed up member of um, the support group here. And maybe he changes his tune now, but maybe he doesn't. I think he has to answer the questions next week. And it's interesting that Bob Arum said in that that Drew Frank Warren and Daniel Kinnan was looking to get involved in this fight. And Drew Harris, the Garda Commissioner yesterday in that press conference, warned those involved in sport and unboxing to examine any relationships they may have with Daniel Kinnan. I make the point that what was implicit is now absolutely explicit. Uh, and if you deal with these individuals who have been sanctioned or these entities which are being sanctioned, you are, in be- you are involved in a criminal network. I would ask them to look to their own business Uh, the uh, probity uh, of their own business and then their relationship uh, with their fans. And really, um, is this something that they want to be involved with in terms of their legitimate business? And I would think the answer to that is a resounding no. You now have the weight of the world's police, the five million you see it on the screen, the US involved, all the agencies. I'm thinking to myself when I was looking at this yesterday, well done, Barry McGuigan, 
for at the time coming out in that panorama documentary and the bravery that he showed to call this out when he did yeah there wasn't a whole heap of people no uh, nobody at, else at that point doing that so uh, now here's the thing right so what did the boxing authorities do because well it's lawless as, as Kieran Cunningham said on the show last night it's the wild west uh, like you can be an advisor <laughs> and how do you prove you're not an advisor do you know <laughs> yeah. like um, yeah so look I, I think that uh, there's, there's probably been a lot of code in the past as well as about like um, uh, when uh, Daniel Kinahan's involvement in boxing was, was being praised for someone who was capable of getting deals done that means giving money like let's you know that that's code for you put the the biggest purse on the table um and so what was the point of that and uh what was what was the the rationale behind that what was the public relations strategy behind that like bear in mind there was a period of time when uh if you said anything connected to uh, Daniel Killen's involvement in boxing that legal letters were being issued and they were very carefully trying to uh, legitimise that aspect of, of his life and it, it feels a little bit like the whole point of this was, the whole point of getting involved in boxing was to kind of take a step away uh, from what happened yesterday and to prevent what what was happening yesterday and that's why the involvement of the Americans is, is so key to this because it means that Bob Arum didn't give a shit at all no. about anything that happens American law is the only ma- law that matters in his mind and, and that's clear from the interview and in the world of boxing it that's true too and so what this does now is it prevents um, any legitimization of that reputation and that it'll brand. have everybody running for the hills yeah so and what happens to MTK that's going to be very interesting yeah. what, what, what is the future for MTK because they were like oh nothing to do with us anymore and then actually around 2020 it was like no 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 you know so not, not only was he our founder he is now back involved helping our fighters again uh, in a personal capacity. Will MTK be rebranded under a new name, I wonder, very very soon? Well, like, it's very interesting to see what the future of that is. And and, and also uh, the relationships with the broadcasters, what well, the broadcasters' answer to this will be. Yeah, well, the, the broadcasters were all very scared of um, of what had happened over the last while, but then it kind of it disappears again. But you now have the biggest fight in the world happening next week and one of the guys is constantly in photos, constantly telling everybody how great Daniel Kinnerhan is. And um, it's just, the story will continue to ratchet up and ratchet up. Um, but yeah, so look, obviously we're going to continue to cover that uh, over the next while.